Why does Montreal receive so much snow? A typical winter brings between 200 and 300 centimeters of snow to the streets of Montreal. Storms move northeastward from the southeast U.S. and dump heavy amounts of snow across the province. These storms account for 80% of Montreal's snowfall. The city has one of the largest snow removal budgets in the world. $54 million a year goes towards cleaning the streets, but related activities generate billions in revenue. Prince Edward Island, Canada's smallest province, is known for its rambunctious winters. PEI has some of the most variable day-to-day -day weather experienced anywhere in the country. Snow is frequent across the province from November to April, and Charlottetown is the third snowiest city in Canada. About 330 centimeters fall there on average each year. Daytime temperatures usually remain below zero from December to March, but bitterly cold temperatures below minus 18 degrees only occur about four or five nights each winter. If your dream vacation includes a stopover in the South Pacific, the Fiji Islands will live up to all of your holiday expectations. Found about 3,000 kilometers off the east coast of Australia, Fiji's made up of over 300 islands. The region's climate is oceanic tropical with year-round warm weather. Temperatures remain constant from one month to the next, with maximums from 26 to 29 degrees. The islands receive an abundance of sunshine. The rain, whenever it happens, is usually short but intense. I'm Rene Brunet, and this is Weather Network News. Scientists in Massachusetts are shaking their heads as to what caused dozens of dead dolphins to wash ashore during this week's storm on the eastern seaboard. We get more on the story from NBC's Rick Davis. As the last of the dead dolphins were cleared from the beaches, scientists were conducting autopsies, trying to determine why so many were stranded beginning on Thursday. One theory, an exceptionally high tide drove them into shallow waters. Uh, I fished offshore for 10 years and, you know, had many sightings of them, uh, but never uh, seen them in so close in the harbor where, you know, they're, they feel so helpless and they get stranded like this. Helping the stranded dolphins has become a community effort. Marine biologists are joined by volunteers. I might swim with wild dolphins and they gave me comfort. They really did. This off-duty Coast Guardsman tried to herd one dolphin back to sea. There you go. Come on. You know, it's a mammal, and uh, they're, you know, a gorgeous creature, and it's, you know, it's sad to see this, this uh, damage that's happening. You know, it's Mother Nature, but, I mean, if we can help out, that's great. But many beyond help, dead in the water, or on land, tagged for later examination by scientists. Wait. Some dolphins were found alive, but too late. They were sick from blood infections after being cut and scraped by rocks along the shallow coastline. They were put to death. It's sad to see them dead, you know, and like this cut up and eaten, pecked at. But um, it's nice that we can rescue them and get the ones that we have that are alive out. Scientists hope post-mortems will reveal much about this dolphin breed seldom studied in the past. Rick Davis, NBC News. Today is the 1st of February, a new month, but it's the same old story for residents still in the dark south of Montreal. Hydro-Quebec is now warning customers that power may be out for another two weeks and to expect more blackouts through the winter. To prepare for the worst, civil authorities are stockpiling mountains of firewood and storing 1,200 generators at emergency facilities. 65,000 people have endured a month of cold and darkness following the ice storm in early January. Celebrations continue at the 42nd annual Wyerton Willie Groundhog Festival in Wyerton, Ontario. It's all leading up to Groundhog Day, which is tomorrow. If our furry forecaster sees his shadow, we're in for six more weeks of winter. If he doesn't, we're in for an early spring. From Wyerton Willie to Beasley Beagle, a canine expert with a nose that knows contraband, more from the Weather Network's Les Griffin. You've probably done this dozens of times, standing in front of what seems to be the endless luggage carousel waiting for your luggage. When travelers arrive from a foreign destination, an unusual agriculture officer is there waiting to scrutinize bags. Beasley is an expert at finding certain food and plant products that cannot be brought into Canada. If you were bringing back fish, he would ignore it. If you were bringing back candies or pastries, he'd walk right by. But if you were bringing back, say, meat from some of these countries, uh, then he would sit down and indicate that there's a meat product there. 
These are items that were seized from passengers who came into Vancouver this morning. Everything from seeds to meats to plant cuttings and even orchids in a bottle. Throughout the world, there are many, many types of problems. And animals can have certain diseases that we don't have in Canada. I think everyone now is very aware of, say, Hong Kong with the avian influenza problem. Taiwan has foot and mouth disease in their swine population. These diseases, if entering into Canada, could cause serious results to, say, our livestock. Plant cuttings and cereal grains are also restricted to prevent introducing harmful parasites. Meantime, most tropical fruits can be brought in so long as they are declared. Citrus products are fine. Uh, we will allow you to have those. Um, but apples, of course, would be restricted. Uh, we would be thinking about different types of plants. Um, say grape vines going to the Okanagan would be very concerned with, or someone bringing in apple trees or whatever. We want to know what they are. And you'd be surprised at what some of these agriculture beagles like Beasley have found in passengers' luggage. Everything from whole slaughtered pigs to meat products to even live birds and animals. And because beagles love to sniff, Agriculture Canada has had tremendous success in confiscating tons of contraband food and plants every year. What we do is we introduce a scent to him. We reward him. As you notice there, when he found something, he gets a piece of kibble. So that's his reward. And that, uh, it's, it's just a game that goes on and on. He never gets tired of it. All items seized by Agriculture Canada are incinerated. As for Beasley, he'll soon be pounding the carpet at Pearson International. Meantime, at Vancouver International, new beagles are already in training for work here and at other major Canadian airports. For the Weather Network, I'm Les Criffiton in Vancouver. That's all for now. Stay with us. Your local detailed forecast follows right here on Canada's Weather Network. Traveler's forecast is also coming up shortly.